The Move tool functions to move geometry around in SketchUp, but also to auto-fold geometry and copy geometry. This video will only focus on moving objects. If you are interested in the auto-fold or copy functionality, click on the links to those videos. As with many tools in SketchUp, you can move objects by clicking once with your mouse to start and clicking again to finish. You can also click and drag an object around. We highly recommend you use the click to start and click to stop method. There are many advantages, but overall it will simply work more consistently if you always click once to start moving and click again to finish. To move any object, it is usually best to pre-select that object with the selection arrow. Then the Move tool will focus only on that object. You can select and move edges, surfaces, or groups. Now let's clear any selection by right-clicking in a blank area of the screen. Now the Move tool will act as an auto-select tool. This means as you hover around your scene, geometry is auto-highlighted. And if you click on a highlighted object, you will move that object. Although we generally recommend pre-selecting geometry before moving it around, there is one case where auto-select is uniquely useful. This is in moving endpoints. You cannot select endpoints in SketchUp with the Select tool. But if nothing is selected, you can move individual endpoints by auto-selecting them with the Move tool. Again, generally we recommend pre-selecting objects. And remember, you can also select multiple objects to move them all together. Now that you know the basics of moving objects, let's talk about how to move objects accurately. The most important concept when moving objects is to think about points in 3D space. To illustrate, let's assemble this simple puzzle. If I start by moving this purple piece and trying to align it with the green box, we can see it doesn't do so easily. This is a common frustration for new users of SketchUp. The problem, however, is that I was careless when I started moving the purple piece. I chose an arbitrary point on the object, but to SketchUp, this is a very precise point in 3D space. And it's moving the object by this very exact point. To make this work, we simply need to pick a better point to start with. Press the Escape key to cancel this move. Select the purple piece again, and this time let's move it by this corner. By choosing a corner, we can precisely move it by the endpoint to the corner or endpoint of the green box. By using meaningful points to move by, in this case corners, we can easily and accurately assemble the whole puzzle. This final piece is a good example that although we chose a meaningful point to use, sometimes the movement itself can interfere with the geometry you want to snap to. This is easily fixed though. First, we can cancel this move with the escape key and simply choose a different starting point if available. Second, we could use our original point and simply navigate to a different view. Finally, it is best to remember that we don't need to complete this move in one action. We could use inference locking to easily complete this piece by moving it two or three times, which is often the best approach in complex models. Now that you know the fundamentals of moving objects inside SketchUp, the rest of this video will provide some specific examples and tips, but the underlying premise is the same. You are always moving objects by one point in space to another point in space. In this example, we have a woodworking joint called a mortise and tenon. You can see the challenge of assembling this joint, however, as the assembly itself hides the endpoints we want to snap to. There are two approaches we might take. The first is to use inference locking 
and move the joints in place with a short series of moves. The second option is to toggle X-ray mode on via the dialog box or menu. This allows us to see through the geometry and use the original endpoints to snap to. This is a very simple technique, but obviously very useful. In our final example, we have some furniture to place around this room. This will allow us to explore how to rotate groups with the Move tool. We can start simply by moving this lamp from the floor to the table. Remember to move the lamp by the base. If we choose a point toward the middle of the lamp, it will move by that point. I'll undo that and start again, choosing a meaningful point on the base. Now let's place these chairs around the table. As we move these chairs, notice that when you hover the Move tool over the chair group, small red marks appear on different sides. If we click on one of these red marks, we can rotate this group. This behavior is unique to groups and components only. To rotate different chairs quickly, I can right-click in blank space to clear any selection and activate the auto-select mode. This makes it easy to rotate several chairs. Now as we move these chairs into place, here is one final tip on using the Move tool. Sometimes when placing objects, they don't have to be perfectly aligned to other objects. Select one chair, and rather than move it by a point on the object itself, I'll click to start away from the chair and move it generally in place. The key is to remember that this is still a very precise move from one point in space to another. I'm simply starting from one point on the floor and moving to another point on the floor. If I start on the floor and don't end by clicking on the floor, I can get undesired results. As always, the important concept is to think about your starting and ending points, which are still points in 3D space, even if they aren't directly on geometry.